and I think the, the last and only other Warframe that has a universal is Protea. Protea Prime, even, I think. Or is uh, it also Protea Prime? Ah! <laughs> Rebecca! <laughs> so, Protea Prime confirmed by Rebecca, I guess. Nice one. So, Devstream 177 has just ended, which means we got some things to talk about, like the new Warframe, Dante, and his complicated ability set. Ineros's rework, two new game modes coming with this update, new weapons, new augments, and plenty more in relation to the Dante Unbound coming in March. So let's just jump right in because I know you lot value your time. Like I said, this update is coming in March and it is going to cover Dante, his story, his fate, and why we are going to be going deeper into Albrecht's labs. Apparently, his story is about loss, sacrifices, and maybe bringing the Leverian back in a different way. He is the scribe or the librarian, so it makes sense. Parvos apparently is going to be making a return and maybe trying to buy the Leverian, but we can save it by playing one of the new game modes, which is an Entrati disruption. Now, there is not a quest coming with Dante, but apparently there is going to be lore that will elaborate on some of, I guess, the previous Whisper's story. Now, this right here is Dante, and he looks like an owl, which I absolutely love. My channel mascot, since my heart surgery, is an owl, so I think I may have found my new Warframe. He is deeply embedded, like I said, in the Levarian, and his abilities are tome and verse related. So writing verses and then executing that script with his ultimate ability. He also has an exalted tome as a weapon. Dante has his own animations, his own dodging animations as well, and he has a really long beard. He's coming with a universal aura like Protea or Protea Prime, which, like I said, Rebecca slipped. Dante's exalted weapon is his tome, and the unique thing about this is that the tome can be used with unlimited amount of the tome mods, not like the tome we have right now, which is limited. Dante's abilities, while they sounded pretty confusing because Rebecca kind of rushed right through them really quickly, it was hard to keep up. But apparently his passive is going to be scanning enemies and you will deal additional damage to enemies that you've already scanned into your codex. His first ability is his Exalted Tome. Now it summons his book. You can build it up with the bar to deal bigger chunks of damage or status like any Exalted Weapon really, but apparently you're not going to need it out to cast his other abilities. His second ability is called Lightverse, which allows him to start building a combo or a sequence by pressing the ability again, and then it will grant overshield. So basically you're gonna be casting two abilities and then executing those abilities with his ultimate. So if you cast his second ability twice, the light verse, and then cast his fourth, his ultimate ability, it will execute that verse. So two light verses will then execute something called triumph, which will grant overguard. His third ability is called dark verse, which deals damage in a cone and it builds his story in the same way as the light verses. You will cast it a second time, and then you will execute something called Tragedy, which will deal increased damage. However, you can cast one light verse and one dark verse, which then when executed with his fort ability, will summon a spectral copy of his exalted tome to float beside you and fight alongside you as well. Or you can cast his dark verse and then his light verse, and then execute that with his ultimate ability, and it will cast Page Flight, which apparently which will summon three Paragrims that will deal damage to enemies nearby you, but it will also pull aggro off you to those Paragrims as well. So he sounds confusing, but he's really not. It's cast two abilities twice, then execute them with the fort, and whichever sequence you go with will determine what effect you get. You can cast his three and then his two and then execute, or you can cast his two and then his three and execute, or 2-2 two, two, or 3-3, three, three, you get the idea, depending on what buff or what outcome you want to have. Now, the game will always take into account the last two abilities that Dante has cast before casting his ultimate as to what you're going to execute. Now, you're going to be using your light and dark verses to keep momentum going. Now, Dante is going to be obtainable by earning him in the new Entrati Disruption game mode called, I think Rebecca said Armistice, or you can get him off Lloyd or by Platinum, but Lloyd is a pity system, so if you've not been lucky in the Disruption game mode, then you are going to be able to eventually buy the drops or his components off Lloyd with the currency. Now, his Helminth ability, I think Rebecca said, was his third ability, which is the Dark Verse ability, and we know that there are also two new Incarnate weapons, the Ruvox, which is a set of gauntlets with coins on the knuckles, and then there is the O-Nose, 
which is a wrist mounted arm cannon also coming with this update these are also obtainable in the new disruption game mode or you can buy them off Lloyd in the sanctum for the pity price as well now so we know about one of the new game modes coming with that entrati disruption mode but we also have another one called deep archimedia which apparently is a rank 5 caviar syndicate mission type so this is more of a veteran game mode with a much higher level of enemies than what the netracels offer right now so it's a tier above netracel difficulty and it is locked behind that rank 5 of the caviar syndicate so you need to be rank 5 if you're not you can't run this mission and it is a weekly mission type as well you're going to be able to run one of these a week and it costs two netracel keys in order to run it now these missions have modifiers as well like picking one of the warframes on offer and then picking the weapons on offer will increase the research value bar at the bottom for better rewards there are two silver chests on offer and there is also a gold chest on offer the silver ones uh, the rewards they said were the same as what the netracels are for archon shards but the gold chests have a higher chance at the better rewards like the tau forged shards now on top of this there is also four personal modifiers to accept that will also increase that reward bar at the bottom and if you fill the reward bar completely up to the top pablo i think said it was going to be a guaranteed legendary arcane now the missions themselves also have modifiers enemies explode with void energy causing you damage or all enemies will have overguard equal to 50 percent of their health there is also an elite version of this new game mode that will give you a chance to get up to five rewards with it so you can run three Netracel missions and one Deep Archimedian mission per week or you can just do what we are already doing which is the five Netracel missions entirely up to you. The enemy level of 325 or 350 they said was still a work in progress but there will be higher level than what the Netracels currently are. Now with the Netracel missions they are removing some of the common arcanes which will increase the drop chances for the remaining loot like Archon Shards and Whispers Arcanes so you will have a higher chance at getting better rewards with Netracel missions as well when this update goes live. Now they did also tell us that the Archon Shard system that was shown off on the last dev stream where you combine four normal Archon Shards to make one Tau Forged has been changed so now it is three normal Shards to make one Tau Forged which is something the community was asking for myself included i said it on my last dev stream recap video i thought four was too much three would have been i guess much easier to i guess swallow considering you're sacrificing three normal shards or four normal shards um to get one tau forge but that's going to be added to the game soon as well but next up we have the long-awaited Ineros rework his devour ability is gone and they've completely replaced it with the armor mechanic from Ineros's fort so scarab armor on death, Inaros will now become a sand zombie who can walk around and attack enemies to revive himself by hitting enemies. So the more enemies you hit, the quicker you will revive. His first ability now enables finishers on more enemy types. His second ability is now a whirlwind that heals him for every enemy that it hits. It also looks like it moves much faster. His third ability is now a channeled ability to gain the armor like it was with his, his old fort. And it allows him to move while channeling the ability to gain armor. It also grants status immunity, which is what the augment for the ability used to do. That augment is now ingrained in the ability itself. And the augment has now been changed to give you a death protection. So a chance to avoid death, I guess an extra life if you will. His fourth ability now unleashes a swarm of scarabs in a cone in front of him that will crowd control enemies. And enemies killed by that swarm will then spawn a sand cat that will then attack enemies as well. Now his old swarm ability used to do one corrosive proc at the end of the ability, but now it does a corrosive proc with every tick, which means he can now shred enemy armor as well. So Inaros is sounding much better than he is right now. His rework isn't exactly zero to hero, like what Hydroids was, but he is still sounding pretty interesting. Hard to kill with heals and vulnerability, armor shredding, armor gaining, sand zombies, sand cats, and so on. Sounds like fun, right? There is also a list of 10 new Warframe augments on the way with this update. This is them on screen. I will zoom in on screen so that you can read them all. But we seen Yorelli's augment in action and it was having her K-Drive Merolina as a companion fighting beside her. So she wasn't on top of it. It was now a companion and it was attacking enemies as well. It looked really bloody useful. Now, 
I'll maybe do a more in-depth video going over the new game mode tomorrow because I do feel like it warrants that instead of just being locked into the recap video or maybe a more detailed Dante video. But we also know that Mirage's Eclipse is getting some changes and is no longer affected by lighting in the room, bright or dark. And it will be a tap or hold ability to choose between damage mode or tank mode. However, as a result of this, its effectiveness is being reduced. So it's getting a bit of a nerf, so expect that. Grendel's Helminth ability Nourish is also getting nerfed because apparently it is the most dominant Helminth ability in the whole community. They haven't decided by how much they're going to nerf it, but it is on the way and apparently it is miles ahead of everything else in the game in terms of Helminth usage. So make sure and stay tuned for that one as well. Now this is Styanax Deluxe and he looks bloody amazing. Honestly, this is without doubt the best Deluxe skin I think I've seen added into the game yet. The polearm skin as well looks absolutely amazing. The level of detail on this whole kit is kind of crazy, but it is a deluxe skin, which means costs money. So moving on. The Dex Nakana will be the 11 year reward being given out to all players in March this year, while also having plenty of returning alerts, which will give you returning Dex items for those of you who may not have them and want to get your hands on them. Now, if you're new to Warframe, the Dex items are pretty much just free items for use to get every year as a celebration of, I guess, Warframe's ongoing lifespan. Now, if you already have these items, they're still worth getting because you could get weapon slots because of them. So just sell the weapons and move on. Now, next month's dev stream will be on March the 22nd and it is coming live from the PAX convention. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but anytime Warframe have had a dev stream from a live convention, they tend to have some kind of a reveal. So who knows what's in store? with next month's dev stream it does seem a bit wild to have a dev stream just at a convention without showing something new off now tenocon tickets are both digital and physical go on sale on march the 28th if you're looking to go to tenocon make sure and grab it or grab the digital ticket either way july the 19th and the 20th is when tenocon is on it's a whole weekend or a two-day thing now we also seen the next items for Tenogen. Now another thing worth mentioning is that Carl's weekly Archon Shard mission is being moved to a vendor in the Sanctum Anatomica to be sold for Cavia standing instead. Apparently this is to make Archon Shard acquisition make more sense moving forward because Archon Shards are going to be invested in more by the community and by digital extremes themselves. So I guess Carl is going to be probably forgotten about standing outside your ship with his buddies wondering where all his brothers have gone because no one's helping him for the most part that's the meat of the latest dev stream 177 let me know in the comment section below what you think of dante what you think of the new game modes especially the one locked behind rank 5 of the caviar syndicate have a great day have a great weekend and as always thanks for watching